Unit 5 India Through the Eyes of a Foreigner I soon realized that it was not going to be difficult to get involved in India. From day one, I was surrounded by friends, the friends my predecessors introduced me to. The staff of All India Radio, the members of the press club and my new neighbors. Many are still good friends. It's through them that I have become involved in their country. Now, when I am asked why I am staying on, I reply because of my friends. That, of course, is only part of the truth. I am drawn to India by its beauty, particularly its natural beauty. Recently, I was beside a campfire in the great Himalayan National Park, watching the snow-covered mountains glitter in the sunset. A week later, I was in Kerala, in the extreme south, sitting in my bathing trunks, looking out over the Arabian Sea as the sun slid like a great red dome below the horizon. There are the smells of India too, which evoke such nostalgia. There is the dry scent of early summer in Delhi as the blue jacarandas, the scarlet gulmohas and other trees come into flower. The sweet smell of the queen of the night and the freshness of the first of pine trees in the foothills of the Himalayas after a long, hot and dusty drive across the plains. There are the folk songs and the classical music with ragas that start with such austerity and end in ecstasy. There are the great epics and the love poetry. There is the art of the Pradhan tribe in central India which occupies the whole of one wall of my flat. There is the color of the festivals, the solemn dignity of the courtyards of the great mosques filled with line after line of worshippers bowing their heads in prayers and the colorful informality of the pujari performing the evening rites in a Hindu temple. There is the sound of priests singing the six scriptures carrying across the water of the sacred tank in which the golden temple stands. There are the great monuments of India. I have never known anyone to be disappointed by the Taj Mahal or the forts of Rajasthan. There are the fresh cooked parathas for breakfast in the open air dhabas or restaurants along the Grand Trunk Road. And there is the delicacy of a vegetarian thali or tray in Gujarat. All these kept me in India, but they are not whole. It would need a poet to describe what India means to me and I am no poet. I can only say that I am not alone among foreigners in believing there is nowhere like India and no people like Indians. I am perhaps more unusual for a foreigner in that I have been accepted as a part of India.